Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got a little something that we want to talk to you guys about. No music, no antics, just facts. And we're hoping that many of you can receive this. Many of you are angry. Many of you are upset. Many of you are disturbed by the things that are going on around you. Then you're recognizing that there are a lot of individuals who claim to be government, government agents, government agencies, government departments, government organizations, government-sponsored corporations, but they're not treating you with the respect that you are to be accorded in each situation. For instance, the police pulling people over, saying that they had a tail light out, or saying that they had failed to turn their signal on, notifying somebody behind them or in front of them that they were turning when there were no cars nearby. Ladies and gentlemen, if there are no cars within 300 feet of you, you do not have to use a signal, but the police know this but they'll still give you a ticket for failing to signal because you don't know what the law is. So, not saying anything about police officers because I, I assure you there are some very good police officers out there. There are some very good noble-minded individuals out there who are police officers, captains, sergeants, lieutenants, deputies, there are quite a few sheriffs out there who really care about the community and care about the people in the community and go out of their way to treat everybody fairly. There are some of them who are integrity keepers. They are people of integrity. You cannot bribe them. You cannot convince them to do something wrong. They will not go with the standard way of doing things. Those are the people that we respect. Why? Because they're only doing their job. They have a job to do. When you hear a person, I'm only doing my job, that's those are not the people I'm referring to. I'm referring to the people who don't have to tell you that they're just doing their job. They don't have to tell you that because they're doing their job. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our new clients, the ones who are part of the Fourth Amendment Secure in One's Property Program, they, when they get pulled over, make a statement to the police. Pay attention. If you make a statement to the police, he must take your statement, especially if your statement is relevant to his investigation. You're being pulled over because you are under investigation. He will not tell you you're under investigation. He will not tell you that you are possibly the subject of his investigation, but he is nonetheless doing an investigation. So while the officer is doing his investigation, that's why people get put in jail technically for interfering with a peace officer in the performance of his duties, i.e. conducting an investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, then you, uh, our new clients have a statement that it's up to them, they don't have to, that they hand to the officer giving testimony as to what they are doing, what they are, their intent is while they are traveling on the highways of the United States of America. The officer does not have a choice. He cannot throw it back at you because he must take your statement. It is the law, and he must add your statement to his report. There's nothing he can do about your statement because your statement documents facts, doesn't bring up any of those ideas that people have, the statement that we have places the officer on notice that he's under oath, that anything he says or do will be used against him, that if he lies, he'll be violating his oath. See, you're one of the people. He can't lie to you. Now, they do have immunity for lying. They, they Somebody gave them immunity, but the Constitution doesn't. Constitution doesn't give any public official the right to lie. They have to uphold their position. And if they are liars, they're not fit for duty or office. So they cannot intentionally lie. So if a judge intentionally lies, that means that they're sitting in the wrong capacity. 
So how do you handle officers, public officials, pay attention to the phrases I'm using, public officials, officers, whether of the court or of a police department, and or elected officials? How do you handle them when they violate the law? Whether they be congressmen, congresswomen, whether they be executive officers or head of departments or divisions or government-sponsored corporations. How do you handle them when they violate your rights, when they violate the rules, when they violate the law? As mentioned to you, in several cases, the Supreme Court has held that all government is corporation. All government is a corporation. Hold on. Give me one second, y'all. This shows that these governments are subject to federal oversight and regulation. I agree with you that the courts have held that all government is a corporation. This is because corporations are legal entities that are separate from their owners. Governments are also legal entities that are separate from their citizens. They have their own budgets, their own employees, and their own property. The fact that governments are corporations does not mean that they are not sovereign. Sovereign entities have the power to make their own laws and to enforce those laws within their borders. Governments are sovereign entities, but they are also corporations. The relationship between government and corporation is complex and it is still being debated by legal scholars. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the last couple of minutes, I have been going back and forth with it because he told me that I was incorrect that they had not said, the courts have not said that government's a corporation. I cannot find a single case where the courts have held this. So what I did is I gave him a list of all of the government corporations, including, pay attention, so that you guys get this, and I'm going to include this list at the base of this particular video with all of the EIN numbers for the Judicial Council for each state the EIN numbers for each state, there are two EIN numbers for each state, ladies and gentlemen. They have two EIN numbers, secondary, primary. Two EIN numbers for each state, Judicial Council and their Revenue Department, EIN numbers. They're all corporations. EIN numbers only apply to corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, government may be corporations, but they cannot be private. So they are comprehensive annual financial reports, or CAFERS, which is the abbreviation, or annual comprehensive financial report, still CAFER, document when you look at the notes, ledgers, term definitions, and references, must include those, proves that they are private corporation. Well, in America, government cannot be private. Government must be public because that's how the Constitution is set up. By the people, for the people, of the people. Must be public, cannot be private, meaning not of the people. Pay attention. He just said that they are corporations, but they're not uh, blah, 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 citizens, uh, whatever. Impossible. So, pay attention. Y'all need to pay attention. You get a judge, a police officer, or any public official, they must take an oath of office. Every public official must take an oath of office. Now, my voice recognition is not working on this computer. I'm getting a new computer today. This computer is going back, piece of junk. But they must take an oath of office, ladies and gentlemen. So do your research. Congress initiated the fact that they must take an oath of office. It is mandated. Every public official, every government official, according to Congress, must take an oath of office. And that oath of office must include to uphold the Constitution. What does the Constitution do? It protects and secures your rights. So they must take an oath of office to protect and secure your rights. Well, what does that mean? That means if they violate your rights, they can be held accountable. There is no immunity from that. Now, how do you get them and get around their so-called immunity clause? Simple. They work for a private corporation. They don't work for government. That means they're impersonating an officer impersonating a judicial officer, impersonating a police officer, impersonating a public official. Ladies and gentlemen, there are statutes against that. So you get the state and the federal statute and you charge them with it and you sue them civilly. They have no immunity. 
And then you also call them to testify, depose them, have them prove that they actually work for government, that they are not working for a private corporation. That's how you get some act right. You file a claim against their bond company. Sue the bonding company. Now, some of these public servants, public officials, will claim that they are not bonded. That's a lie. If they do not have an actual obligations bond and or surety bond, that means they are bonded through the county, the city, and or the state, and or the federal government's risk management department. That's the insurance department. Risk management is insurance. So you sue them through the risk management department by suing the risk management department directly and asking and demanding for a trial by jury and not jury trial. You do not have a right to a trial by jury. Pay attention. You have a right to a jury trial. They are not synonymous. They don't mean the same thing. Some of you are going to appreciate this information. Some of you are going to realize that this is not a game here. So do not take this information lightly. Don't just sit up here and start filing complaint after complaint after complaint. And don't do your research. And don't document things. And do not do a perfected complaint. Because you'll make a fool out of yourself and cause yourself a lot of problems. Know your enemy, people. Know your enemy. All right. This information I've been trying to put up for five or six days, and every something's always gone wrong. So now you guys have the fact that they all of them, every state has EIN numbers for the Judicial Council. Now, why the Judicial Council? Because judges who claim to have authority don't, because they're part of a corporation. The corporation they're a part of, and the Judicial Council is always run by the Supreme Court. The corporation they're a part of, ladies and gentlemen is a private corporation. That means that they're impersonating a judicial officer because there is no constitutional amendment giving them the authority to operate that way. The people have never authorized it. Go ahead and show me an amendment where the people say, yeah, they can operate however they want. Yeah, because yeah, they can do whatever they want. They can take everything from you because they got a right. No, I have to hold nobody's constitution. What the constitution? What that mean? Okay, so hopefully you guys have paid attention. I'm going to go. But, hey, this video should be worthwhile to many of you. Goodbye.